Hey guys, this is Alan with Bothwell STEM Coach, and today we're continuing on with AP Physics. We're doing more dynamics problems, and dynamics problems are all about um, uh, drawing free body diagrams, setting up the net force equations, and computing sort of the response. Um, so let's take a look at uh, this question here. Two 10 kilogram boxes are connected by a massless string that passes over a mass massless frictionless pulley shown above. The boxes remain at rest, with one on the right hanging vertically and the one left hanging 2.0 meters from the bottom of the inclined plane that makes an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal. The coefficients of kinetic friction and static friction between the left hand box and the plane are 0.15 and 0 0.30 respectively. Uh, okay, connect, so mu, the kinetic friction is 0.15 and the static friction is 0.30. You may use g equals that, sine is that, and this. This is the old days when they you weren't necessarily expect to have your calculator on the test, so you kind of had to compute these by hand. Um, what is the tension t in the string? Okay, so I want to set up free body diagrams. The boxes remain at rest. So remaining at rest means that there's uh, no acceleration, so that's that's important. So it's, this is more of a statics question, but I, I lump it in with the dynamics. It's all kind of the same idea. Statics is just like everything is sitting still, and dynamics is like maybe there's a net acceleration. Okay, free body diagram on this guy. This guy's receiving 100 newtons down, right, mg. And because g is about 10, 10 times in the 100, this guy, there's a tension up this way. And so um, this is pretty easy to compute the tension because the net acceleration on this has to be zero. T minus 100 newtons has to equal zero because this is equal to ma and a is zero, right? Net force equals ma. It's always the same. Net force equals ma. So the tension then has to be 100 newtons. Okay, that's the tension in the rope. That's part a. On the diagram below, draw and label all the forces acting on the box that is in the plane. So here, we have the same tension. We have 100 newtons down this way. And then, um, uh, you know, it's hard to say, but there's a, there's a frictional force probably in this direction. Um, you know, it's really, it's actually hard to say uh, which direction, but there's definitely a normal force. And there's definitely a frictional force. Now, whether the force of friction goes this way or uh, it, it depends on which way the it needs to to balance all the forces. Okay, so the frictional force is sort of a reactionary force. It'll react to resist motion, and we don't know which way we tend to have motion at this point. Okay, so that's that. Determine the magnitude of the frictional force acting on the box in the plane. Okay, so we got to establish direction. In the direction of motion, usually um, along the plane is positive x direction. So then we'll make it up to the right, and then we'll make this positive y direction. Okay, and I need to get the net forces in the in the x and y direction. So let's look in the x direction. In the x direction, I have t. I have um, the components of force that I have to split out here because gravity, this 100 newtons, is split. I think of it as split into the y and x components. And this here is 60 degrees. You can't really see that, but that angle there is 60 degrees. So this force here is 100 times the sine of 60 degrees. They tell us sine is 87, so this is 87 newtons. This one here is 87 cosine. 87 cosine is 1 half, so that's 50 newtons. Sorry, 100 cosine. All right, so that's that's those are the components. So as you can see, I have tension, which is equal to 100 newtons. So I'll say 100 this way. Then fighting me is 87 newtons this way, and the force of friction. That has to be zero, and so that equals. Um, so that implies force of friction has to be 13 newtons. Okay, and clearly, so here, here's the thing: gravity is doing 87 newtons down, tension is uh, 100 newtons up, which means without any friction, the box would start sliding up towards. So the friction is fighting that, 
and uh, doing 13 newtons to counteract that. And it's it's matching that because the box is is uh, is in rest. Now you might ask, what about the coefficient of frictions and the normal force? Like why didn't I need to deal with any of that? Well, the coefficient of frictions, the kinetic friction would only is extraneous information. This would have only mattered if um, we had exceeded the static friction and we were sliding. And then the static friction really only is useful if you need to know what the maximum force is to overcome the static friction in order to start it moving. And again, we don't really need that because that's not what we're computing. We just know the force of friction has to be 13 newtons. The mu n for force of friction is really more of the max, for static motion, it's the maximum force that the friction can apply, but it's not necessarily like the, how much frictional force there is. And if it's moving, then it's definitely equal to this also, the, the, the kinetic friction. But again, since it wasn't moving, we didn't need the kinetic friction for one. We needed the static friction one. Okay? So I hope you guys found that helpful. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content. And see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.